In our murky world where people are creative with their interpretations of in-house watchmaking, the watchmaker we're gonna look at today can class their watches as 98% in-house. That's pretty much as in-house as you're gonna get. Welcome back to the channel, I'm Adrian, and this is where I make videos documenting my exploration of the watch world. And today we are checking out a watch that is a collaboration. It's a brilliant combination between tactical design and Hort Horology. Hopefully you saw the first part of this video or the lead into this video where I explored Armand Strom, the watchmaker over in Beale, Switzerland. If you haven't seen that video, a quick overview. Uh, Mr. Armand Strom was a watchmaker in Switzerland who was known for customizing watches, specifically skeletonizing watch dials. Two childhood friends, Serge and Claude, were fascinated by watchmaking, fascinated by Mr. Armand Strom, and in 2009, they took over the company and launched their first in-house watch. Carrying on the obsession of space and showing off the movement of a watch and therefore reducing the size of the dial and kind of making the dial perhaps not fully secondary to the movement, but certainly placing it to one side so we had a better view of the movement. Carrying on that motivation or that vision of Mr. Armstrong. The watch that we're checking out today is a collaboration between Collective Horology and Armstrong. Collective Horology have been on the channel before. They did an IWC watch, which I covered, and there's a massive difference between their tactical monotone IWC and what Armstrong usually do, and that's why this collaboration is interesting. Collective Horology is a watch community that was started by Gabe and Asher with an idea of doing watch communities differently. Basically, the idea is that they create collaboration with various watch brands and add their own design twists to the watches, and then the community are able to buy these watches. And that is exactly what they've done here. This is their third collaboration as part of their portfolio series, and this is the Armstrong. Gravity equal force P03. Asher, one of the founders of Collective Horology, is really into his tactical gear and his tool watches and wanted to bring those aesthetics to Hort Horology, to high-end watchmaking, and that is the essence of this collaboration. The case for this watch is Titan, which is new for this series within Armstrong. It is 41 millimeters wide, 12.65 millimeters deep, and it has sapphire crystal on the top and on the back, and both have anti-reflective treatment on it. The watch has 30 meters of water resistance and the dial, as you can see, is heavily offset to the side. It is a Fume Khaki dial. On the dial, we have applied numerals and applied hour markers and the hands are in-house. The hands on a watch are one of the things that are often outsourced because they're so tricky to make, so tricky to finish, and the failure rate is really very high on these things but this is Armand Strom, so not only are these made in-house, they're finished in-house. The movement is, of course, an in-house movement. I'm making a big thing about the in-house because this is true in-house. There's kind of two levels of in-house. It's, it's kind of proper in-house like we have here, and then you have corporate in-house where, where groups are working together to make something to be in-house that they can legally say something is in-house, but it isn't actually in-house. These guys make this stuff in their own factory. End of story. So this movement is a true in-house movement. This is the Caliber ASB19 with an automatic micro rotor that you can see on the front. This is an inverted micro rotor. This movement's got some fancy stuff going on. The barrel is a Geneva Drive equal force barrel. We have a regulating system, which is the balance wheel and has full regulating screws. So this is a free sprung balance wheel. I'll go into detail in a second what this actually means. But this watch has a limited power reserve of 72 hours. The movement spins slightly slower than the majority of watches that are out there. This spins at 25,200 vibrations an hour. And of course we have hand finishing on the components and I saw firsthand this hand finishing being done. Like with all pieces that I've done by Collective Horology, uh, this is limited. There are 30 pieces of these and they're gonna retail for 25,000 US dollars. Let's break down the movement on the front of this watch because they kind of, the, part of Armstrong's thing is that the movement isn't just something to power the watch, it's something that is good looking, but also they think about the symmetry of the dial and the movement to create the design of the watch. So at 12 o'clock, we have the inverted micro rotor that you can see spinning around. At three o'clock, you can see where the stem of the crown interacts with the movement and obviously where you change time. But down at six o'clock is where the big stuff is happening. This is where we can see the equal force barrel with the subtle power reserve indicator on it. There's an issue with using a spring to power a watch because if you think about a spring, when, when you wind it all the way up, the spring is gonna have so much more power and so much more torque when it's fully wound compared to when it's unwound or nearly finished, 
the torque isn't gonna be enough to power a watch. So naturally when the spring is fully wound up, the watch is gonna run a little bit faster than normal and then gradually get slower and slower as the spring unwinds to a point where the movement is inaccurate because it's running too fast when the spring is fully wound and the movement is also inaccurate when it's unwound because it's running too slowly. So the way Armstrong have created this equal force barrel is that they've taken the Maltese cross a mechanism that's typically used in manual wind watches to prevent us from overwinding the watch. They've taken this and adapted it so that not only does it prevent the spring from being overwound, it also stops the movement when the spring becomes too loose. So if you think about the lifespan of a spring is like this. So we have the super tight, the high power, the high torque area here, and then the loose, low power, low torque area here. So by using the Maltese cross, they're preventing this point by being used. And then the other end of the Maltese cross is stopping the movement from using the low section here. So essentially you're cutting off the high power, cutting off the low power, and then they're utilizing 72%, the middle 72% of the spring's power. That means the spring is providing pretty much an equal amount of force within this 72% this section, allowing the movement to be accurate. It's pretty clever stuff. If you've already heard of Armstrong and you're familiar with their design, you will see that this watch is very obviously an Armstrong design. The, 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 the collaboration hasn't meant that the design has changed, but the aesthetic has definitely changed. Armstrong is hot horology. These guys make fancy watches with very elegant looking finishes on there. But the cool thing that Collective Horology have done is come in and given this watch a kind of tool-like twist, a tactical twist, with the styling and the finishing. We have very subdued earthy tones within the dial. That khaki is a very earthy, quite an army tactical coloring on the dial, especially with that little subdued desaturated green within the sub dial. The movement plate that you can see from the front of the watch has a heavy, deep, very aggressive gear shape pattern on it. And then you look at the bridges and the bridges have this industrial design about them, industrial finish about them, and again, if you look deeper into the bridges, you will see symmetry within the finishing. So the upper and lower bridge, they both have a brushed horizontal brush finish to them. And then the middle bridge has a satin finish to it. This tactical tool vibe is then carried on to the back of the watch where you can see this a very dark monotone finish to the whole of the movement, apart from obviously the jewels and that nicely allows the jewels to stand out. One thing that really stands out as being cool, especially from, from the design point of view of this watch and, and kind of highlighting the two contrasts between delicate hot horology watchmaking and then the tactical uh, aggressiveness of, of the design that's gone into the watch is the back view. I love the length of this elongated balance cock holding the balance wheel. And then you have the depth around the balance wheel as well. And that kind of showcases the delicacy, the, the daintiness of this level of watchmaking in heavy contrast to the aggressiveness of the solid industrial plates on the other side of the movement. I think both Armstrong and Collective Horology have done a cool thing of bringing these two ideas together, the tactical toolness of watches and hot horology. For me, this is the fun part of watch collaboration. It's two things that technically on paper shouldn't really work, but I think it works. What do you guys think of Armstrom and what do you guys think of this collaboration? If you want to check out more about this watch or if you want to join Collective Horology, jump over to collectivehorology.com. There'll be a link in the description down below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you like the style of this video, then hit the subscribe button down there and that little bell icon so you get notifications when I drop a new video. If you want me to check out certain watchmakers or watch brands, drop a comment down below and let me know which watch brands or watchmakers you want me to explore. If you're on Instagram, give me a follow at Bark and Jack. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care.